It's been more than 30 years since Gary Skinner started Watoto Church, along with his wife Marilyn. A fourth-generation pastor, Gary believes it is the church's responsibility to solve problems in the community. It's something Watoto is doing every day outside the four walls of the church. How did you know this was exactly what God wanted you to do? Well, we were pastoring in Zambia. Uh, came back to be pastor of a small church in Zambia, and then we moved to Lusaka, the capital city. The church grew, and while we were there, God very clearly said, "Gary, I want you to go downtown Kampala, Uganda, plant an English-speaking church. Through that church, I'll touch the city, I'll touch the nation." Clear as anything I've ever heard in my life. So now, when you got here, what was that experience like? What were some of those things you had to really have faith? and God to get through? Well, it was, it was pretty well everything. I mean, it was a totally broken nation. We'd had 10 years of Idi Amin, who'd killed a half a million people. We were in the middle of a second repressive regime, which was the regime that Idi Amin overthrew and now was back. They were in the process of killing another half a million people. The, the people were broken, discouraged. You literally couldn't buy a soda you couldn't buy dairy product. We couldn't even fly into the country. The airport didn't work. We, we heard gunfire every night. They used to call it popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. And uh, sometimes you'd come out in the morning and there'd be bodies in the streets. It was, it was just an unbelievably broken, destroyed nation. We not only faced all of that, but uh, we had People break into our homes. Um, we had our first two cars stolen from us at gunpoint. Uh, it, was, it was tough. It was really, really a tough nation. And in the middle of that, we were ready to start the church on April the 22nd, which was Easter Sunday. And two weeks before, uh, we had a horrific car accident. Uh, the car was totaled. I was thrown out, broke all my ribs. Uh, but God miraculously protected us. And uh, so th to start was tough. Several years later, God spoke to Pastor Gary again, this time giving him an even bigger assignment. One day God very clearly said to me, Gary, I want you to look after my children, not the children, my children. I knew instantly it was the orphan child because AIDS had hit Uganda like a bomb. We, were the, we had the highest number per capita orphans for any nation in the world. We had 20 million people in the, in the country at the time. Two million were orphans. I resisted. I said, God, I don't want to look after kids. I, I, you know, I, want, I want to preach. I want to pastor. And God very clearly said I, to me, I, I didn't send you to Uganda to do what you want. I, want. I sent you to Uganda to do what I want. This is my son. We've rescued 4,000 children. We have about 1,000 of them that have now graduated from high school. We have about 500 that have been through university. Our thousandth baby has been through the program. Uh, we've, you know, little preemies that have been abandoned. Our smallest child was, was, was less than a pound. And now she's a beautiful little girl in one of our, our villages. When I go out on every one of those children that I see, I think, wow, here's somebody who God is going to do something not only doing something, but going to do something significant in life. I, I burst my buttons with pride every time I, I see them. They're my kids. Be exalted, O oh Lord, our God, oh yes, you reign. Pastor Gary says the ministry isn't just rescuing orphans. It's building leaders. And one way it's doing that is through the world-famous Watoto Children's Choir. What impact do you think that's really had on the lives of the children who've had the opportunity to join that choir? How has that reshaped their experience and changed their lives? Kids who go on a choir take a year out of their normal school life. They spend five months in preparation, then they're six months on the road. By the end of that year, they have been through some personal discipleship and training. They have gone to a cross-cultural experience where they have interacted with people from another culture and, and they just absolutely blossom in their personalities. They become a part of something very successful and they say, wow, I, I can do something with my life. In the end, the work Watoto Church does from the pew to the village and even to the choir is about sharing the love of God. What have you learned about God through this entire journey with Watoto? I think the greatest thing about God is that God is love. And that the, 
core value uh, in society, in my life, in our life, in the church, the core value needs to be genuine love for people. That's what I've taken back. It's all about love. But, but it's all through the, the main doors of a local church because I believe the church is the hope of the world. And Jesus told us to go out and to make disciples of nations, of nations, not just people. And, and so we, we've come to this nation to be able to find what, what, are the, what are the problems of the nation? And the solution is God's people. Whether those people are working in politics or whether they're working in business or whether they're working in education, we need to grow a people of God who reflect the character of Jesus and the culture of Jesus. What did Jesus do? He went out to where the people were and he met their real need through the local church. It's not about a big church with great music, smoke and lights and worship and great preaching. That's just a, a conduit through which God works to bring healing to broken people. You know, we talk about Jesus is the hope of the world. How? The character of Jesus, if all the things that made Jesus Jesus was in the core of our community, we would change our world. Love, justice, kindness, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, grace, mercy. Wow, we would change our world. So I've learned that he's good, but most of all, he passionately loves every single person and wants to transform them into something great.